Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic. Um, much like Simon yesterday, today I'm going to be experimenting with um, the new interface created by um, our viewer and my teammate from the uh, the last World Sudoku Championship, Sam. So, uh, you know, I really want to add my thanks to Simon's, to Sam, for creating um, a way in which we can show some of the puzzle types that we haven't been able to show previously and, and solve in a format. So I think this um, interface is still a little bit experimental. It's not rolled out yet. So um, we're just having a go with it. And I mean, I think it's a really exciting possibility for a way to do puzzles. Now, as I say, um, this is giving me the chance to work on a variant that we haven't seen before on the channel. We've never featured this before. This is called Multiplication Table Sudoku. And the rules are, you can see there's a number of cages in the grid um, with a little X in the top. And what this means, the rules are written down here, but what it means is that the two top digits in each cage multiply together to give the two-digit number that appears in the bottom two cells of either cage. So, for instance, this one up here, that could be not 2 times 9, and then you'd have 18, or the digits 1, 8 in order down here, and that would be a possible solution to that part. Now, that constraint obviously helps and is necessary to solve the puzzle, um, and we'll see how it works in practice as we go through the solve. Now, this puzzle comes from, as Simon's yesterday, this comes from the Sudoku Grand Prix. This is from round five, which was set by Croatia. Um, as Simon says, these are always really good puzzles. I mean, the standard, once you're in the World Puzzle Federation competitions, is very high. Uh, it's a competition that runs monthly um, for the first six months of the year, I think. So this one's actually was from last weekend. So it's a very recent puzzle for, for solvers. And um, I'm just going to see if we can get through this now. So I'm going to click to play and then uh, forgive me if I have any slownesses. Now look, five and five in rows one and three. So there's a five in this product down here, which is the product of these two cells up here. Now that five therefore cannot be in this cell at the end because then the two numbers that multiply together to give a number ending in five must also have a five which would be in the same three by three box which is impossible. So the five must start the two digit number and actually I think that's very helpful immediately. We've already got one, two and three in the box so this can only be four, six, eight or nine, can't be a seven because there's one there. Now, 54 could be nine times six, so that's possible. 56 could be seven times eight, so that's also possible. Um, 58, 59, 50, yeah, there, I mean, there's no other possibilities. So um, one possibility of those was 50 four, which could be nine times six. Now that would give seven times eight down here, and that's not possible because there's a seven there. So we can forget that possibility. It must be 56. Um, this must be seven times eight. We know the order because of the eight down here. Now these are four, nine in some order. Yes, I can do pencil marks. Lovely. Look at that. Thank you, Sam. Um, 4, 9 obviously multiply together to give 36. So the constraint's given us a great start at the top there. Um, now, what else can we do? Now, so in this row here, 49375, um, the 1 cannot be in these two cells. Now, can you see why? Well, the reason is that 1 multiplied by any other single digit must give a single digit answer so it wouldn't fit in this double digit space here. So the one must be either here or here. Um, and there are various possibilities. It could be 16, which is 2 times 8. It could be 12, which is 4 times 3. That's quite appealing because we'd like a 3 in that row. Um, it could be... 18, no, 9, 2, and 6, 3 are ruled out. 
So eight is not in those two digits. So one of these over here must be the eight. Um, and that will multiply by either the two or the six to give 48 or 16. So the two possibilities we have here are 48 and 16 with 8 multiplying by either 2 or 6. Um, so we do have either 12 or 16 there. Now if it was 16, as I said, that could only either be 4 by 4, that's clearly not possible in the same box, or 2 by 8. And in fact, the 2's gone, so it can't be 16. The 2 is already in that row, so this can't be 2 times 8. So this can't be 16. Ooh, I haven't given thought to what if it ends in a 1. 21 would be 7 times 3. No. Uh, 61 and 81. 81 would be 9 times 9. That's far too high. And uh, Sorry, what I mean is 81 is 9 times 9. 61 is a prime. So this actually, this box must be 12. That's the only possibility we've got left. And this one is 68. So I was kind of wasting my time a little thinking about the other possibilities. That's 4, 8. That actually sorts out which the order of the 8, 6 are. These are 3 and 4, or because they can't be 6 and 2. We've got a 4 down here. So you do need to know your times tables for this, obviously, but it is called multiplication Sudoku, so that's not a surprise. Um, and we get a decent attack there now. Must be two and four for the remainder of that row and one and nine for the remainder of this row, but we'll have to sort those out in due course. Now, let's start looking down the grid. Uh, sixes are all done in the first group. Threes, hmm, we must have a three either here or here. This may not be the most profitable way to look at this. Fours, either here or here, because of these two fours. Um, eights, oh yeah, those two eights mean that there's an eight down in one of these two cells. Because of that eight, we know which one that is, must be here. And that's interesting, that gives us the eight in this central bottom box. We can now establish that that must be in that cell because of this eight, this eight, and this eight. So this product is either 18, that is possible, 28, but that would only be, I think, seven times four. That's not possible because of this seven. 38, no, that's two times 19. Four has been used up, 58, 78, they're not possible. It must be 18. And that could be either 2, 9 or 3, 6 up here. So I'm not going to write, or maybe I'll put all the possibilities in. They could be any of 2, 3, 6 and 9, as long as they multiply to make 18. But that was quite a useful way of resolving the product there. 9, 1, 8, 4, 6. Now 2, 2 here, and this top row is ruled out from this box. So we've got a 2 in the bottom row there. The 2 up here must be here. The 2 in this box down here, because of this 2, this 2, and there being a 2 in the bottom row, this clearly is a 2 at the end of this product. That fixes the 3 as well. Now that's quite interesting, because of the other numbers in the row and the 3, this is either 52 or 72. Now 52 has 13 as a factor, so it can't feature in this puzzle. This must be 72, which is 9 times 8. The maximum product possible is 72. Um, and that enables us to decide that there must be a 1 at the start of these. And we know, again, the same logic applies as up here. 1 cannot be the number in the top row of one of these cages because it would multiply to give a single digit product. So the one is down here. Um, that can't be a one and indeed these must be four and five. Now five, we rule that out up here, but down here five could end this cage because it could be five times three equals 15. But equally, it could be 4 times 3 equals 12, and there may be other candidates with a 4, so I'm not going to focus too much on that yet. 
Let's see what else we can establish up here. There, this nine that we got has resolved this pair. Um, this must be another four or five. This is a one. And ah, the nine also resolves which pair of digits multiplies to give 18 here, which is lovely. That gives us three six as a pair there. Um, that limits the four in this central box. It can only go there now. Now, what can we do? Ones have some possibility. Eight. There's only one place for an eight in that box. This box is becoming narrower and narrower in some senses now. Six, four, eight. Where can we go next? Um, well, the constraint's been very useful. Ah, yes, look at this row seven here. Now, these last two digits are three and five. We can even tell which way round they are in a couple of ways. The three up here determines it, or the fact that 53 isn't a valid product of two different digits. So 35, and that's obviously achieved by five times seven. So that's very straightforward. The fours here have decided the rest of this row effectively. So that can just go in. That resolves a pair up here. That must be 4, 2, and 4, 8, 2, 5, 7, 6. It's determined by the 6s in columns 7 and 9. That allows us to finish off column 8, 7 there. Now we've got 2, 7, and 5 here. And in fact, the numbers above all sort that out. And now look, 15 is the product here. 5 times 3 gives 15. A surprising number of 5s in the cages in this puzzle, because 5 is normally quite a hard digit to work into a Sudoku of this sort. So I think we're on the finishing stretch now. I mean, it, this, this hasn't proved too difficult. As Simon said, these puzzles aren't necessarily all that hard. They do generally require some interesting logic, and I mean, I think we found that with this one, but they're not necessarily designed to really tax you. What taxes you is the fact that there are 14 or so puzzles to do within an hour and a half, and by the standards of the timing on this puzzle, there we go, that completes it, um, you get an hour and a half to score the 600 points if you're an expert, um, if you finish all the puzzles within the time given. And by the standards of that, this puzzle was worth 30 points, so it should take an expert about four and a half minutes. Now, if you did that within four and a half minutes, um, congratulations. And as Simon said yesterday, you really should be looking for a place in your national team at that point. Do contact your National Puzzle Federation. Um, please take part in the world Puzzle Federation's Sudoku Grand Prix. There's two more, no, one more, I think, still this year in uh, about three weeks' time. I'll put up the link to uh, the booklet for this puzzle because there's, as I say, 12 or 13 other puzzles well worth doing. They're really enjoyable. You know, it's great that these are set effectively free. That booklet uh, can be printed. It's not a kind of playable format. And uh, we'll keep testing Sam's interface and uh, hopefully, you know, one day we'll be able to roll something out that everybody can have a go at these sorts of puzzle in this way. It's really worked beautifully today. It's my first live go trying it and uh, it's gone well. So thank you very much for watching. Do subscribe to the channel. Feel free to uh, click the bell so you get notified when we have new videos appearing. And uh, do look on us, do look for us on uh, Patreon, Cracking the Cryptic, where if you sponsor us a couple of dollars a month, you'll get the puzzle a month that we send out to our patrons. And three dollars a month, you get to watch a video of us solving it as well for uh, help on how to do that. So thank you very much for watching and uh, hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.